Oh, that's Thank Ian. You. That's uh, hello, citizen. That's Ian DeForest. <laughs> All right. Those new planets and biomes were pretty, right? Yep. But it's time from phase three civilization to give you some stuff. L later, do. Graf. Later. Don't worry. So, let's talk about location density. We've emulated nature as well as we can mm -hmm. to make sure our planets are physically based and realistic and our biomes are emergent. But it's time to start populating the verse. Yes! Because where there's people, there are their lives and the structures they build. So it makes sense that whenever you go and explore these planets, that you find their lives. And Villages, cities, that outposts. That they use and they follow the same rules as our biomes, such as the jungles and the swamps. Roads would be nice. But before we continue, let's first take stock as to where we are now. At the moment in the verse, we have these custom, beautifully made locations, such as Ghost Hollow. We've got our distribution right. centers. But that's not what they want to do. They want to do procedurally generated. We have all been handcrafted by our mm. designers and artists. Which takes time. Benchmark. And they've been working directly on the planet. However, going forward, this doesn't really scale with how we want to go forward with the game. Server meshing is about to arrive, and we're going to have a way higher player count. So those 73 yeah. bunkers across Stanton <laughs> just won't cut it. No. But in general, it's also pretty barren. There's not much for you to explore and find stuff out there. Mm -hmm. So there's no exploration gameplay. You haven't really put your character to use for the way that you should. Oh, that's a good point. So this means we need to go bigger, which means we need to change our workflow. And with any workflow means we need to first establish a new benchmark. Okay. So with our new benchmark, we are ensuring quality and improve on our previous work and make it even better. And any location that you'll find needs to have its own unique personality and no repetition. We don't want you to find the same location twice. That is a this big challenge this there. Is your exploration and your findings. So when you go out there and explore with your Carrick or with your Corsair, is that whatever you find, you can share with your orgs or with your friends. As for a density, if you fly down to the planet, you, we want you to find something, let's say, every 100 clicks. But also improve the mission experience. I like the so idea of having something every 100 planet, kilometers. That's, that's good. And you go from location to location. Just keep going. So going forward, we are modularizing all our existing locations mm -hmm. and assets. Where you're basically making a library of buildings and layouts. That's something that they already that have, right? To no longer work directly on I mean, the surely when they build those new outposts, all these modules and they must have done that before. Be iterated upon and tested right in the editor for all the designers and artists to ensure fun gameplay and interactive sandbox activity, and also make sure all the mission stuff is there. Basically, we're building a toolkit. So let's look at some of the things that we need to keep in mind as we are making that toolkit. First and foremost, we've got our art style and branding. We've got things like Frontier for our settlements. Mm -hmm. We've got high tech for the emergency shelters. But oh, also yes, that's right. Like our bunkers and distribution centers. And the richer the data, the richer these locations. And they probably create. have all the types of arts and branding, right? Secondly, they all have a function. We've got mining for our mining outposts, farming for the farmsteads, mm -hmm. or just places where people live. The function of the place will define the way the place looks as well, and its form. And last but not least, the people as well, the faction oh, and their loadouts. Yeah. We've got lawful people, like the new Citizens for Prosperity in Pyro, unlawful, such as Xenofred, and sometimes not even no, no one. And the place needs to look a bit, you know, derelict. Run down, yep, yep, yep. In different places, you'll find different people. So, now that There's we've, Daymar. Tool, we've defined all this new stuff, let's start building thousands of locations. Yes, I said thousands. <laughs> what? So, to avoid the same issue of working on directly in the planet, I'd like to introduce to you Starkitect. Star <laughs> 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 what Starkitect allows us to do is directly on the planet Starkitect. scale, scatter all these new libraries and modules and assets and no longer work directly on the planet. <laughs> and it uses the same logical rule set as our emergent biomes. And we, it also gives us full control... Uh, gruff, I see your reaction in the chat. <laughs> so expect locations Starkitect. and places where they make sense. Let's kind of 
look at all these I should have put new star stuff in the in a in a bingo I missed that see what it gives us all right here's Bonox here as you can see we're now able to make full-size locations and they will com look completely different based on where you'd find them the layouts are controlled controlled by the rules and it will reflect its place in the verse we've got farms mining outposts but oh, they're really close to each other the bunkers yeah. that you find on stanton they're really close to each other now that's how it's gonna be that close. Huh. Okay. So, let's look at an example and kind of use the tool to really, you know, make a location. We can define the rules, as I've mentioned a couple times by now. So for our mining outpost, it wants to be near a resource. Mm. We can specify what this resource needs to be. But we can also give us suggestions where sometimes you'd find it here and sometimes you wouldn't. If the location has refineries, it might want to be near water to refine the resources. Then secondly, we can define what buildings should be there. So obviously we need mining buildings. Mm -hmm. And houses, houses for people, for to, people leave. to live as well. Yeah. And even power buildings that we can leverage with Makes the resource sense. network. Starkitect will intelligently figure out Star where the place is and what needs to be at the location. I can't get used to it. Starkitect. Next up, farms. <laughs> It's oh. rules. Well, temperature. Not every plant can live in every temperature. But the same with soil type. Only certain plants can be in certain grounds. Mm -hmm. And then we can query the seed map to determine what plants you would find there. What are the harvestables? As for the targets, again, farm buildings, obviously. Power I buildings. Wish, I wish Diplo Houses, was here to talk about farms in the chat. Grazers. And last but not least, derelict chips. We've got these all over the place currently. Oh, yeah. Rules, well... They'd be close to an anti-air because I would be shot down. But <laughs> even in harsh flight conditions, such as mountains mm -hmm, or low mm -hmm. visibility, you probably most commonly find them. Targets? Well, crash ship parts, of course. Sometimes you'd find the full remains of a javelin, and the other time you might just find the nose of a starfare laying around. Ah, uh, that's okay. Yeah. So, hey, Diplo is here! <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> Talking about farms! Sure, we can scatter all these locations everywhere on the planet, and you'll find them in places they make sense, but we can do better. You don't just want to find an outpost completely on its own, right? We want to make sure it really feels like people have built their lives. That's kind of it is, right? It's just so, a little outpost. It doesn't look so good. Let's talk about some missing bits. We want to tell tighter stories, such as the people's lives, but mm -hmm. also logical exploration. If I find one thing, I expect to find something similar or something else nearby. We also need more data control. What defines Let me tell you what else we need. We need NPCs being, being there because the, the outposts are so empty. And also give the narrative developments. Make sure, you know, people build near rivers, on mountains. They build near town halls. They build near distribution centers. So how does that look like? So to hit that bit of our benchmark, we make sure that locations are near each other and group them together. The effect it gives is a fully developed landscape with vistas and points of interest all over. Huh. And we group them together in what we like to call a cluster like this one that has 13 locations. Yeah, because it's nice to have clusters, but it's nice to have places where there's nothing also, right? So you can really feel... Let's talk about clusters. Being in the frontier. Means generating locations near other locations. So, for example, if you find a distribution center, just like in the verse currently, I would find forward operating bases next to them. But if you go even further out, you'd find mining outposts to funnel those resources to the FOBs. Mm -hmm. Go out even further, you'd find caves around them, because that's where they might find some of the gems. And then we can even specify the data at, on a cluster level. The, all of the factions that live at this whole cluster. And maybe a little home, so home stage not too far? People, but also what commodities they sell to find on what resource you'd find. So let's look at an example of the clusters. We have our mining cluster. Again, we can define what rules we should have. Rules, well, near a resource, just like our mining outpost. Say titanium, but also for example. It needs to be on a lawful planet. We can target on a planetary scale where they would need to be. They need protection. As for the targets, well, caves, mining outposts, but even trade posts. Let's go to the other side of the spectrum. Before I do so, I forgot data 
We can on a cluster level specify. A there you species, go. That's what I was talking also about, right? Purposeable types you'd mm. find are in that in that region. Now let's look at the other side of the spectrum: an unlawful cluster. Okay. What rules? Well, they need to be far away from any other cluster. Yeah, he doesn't, right? Because they want to be isolated and do mm. their evil deeds on their own. And also on an unlawful planet, such as somewhere in the Pyros system. For the targets, I would like outposts, crash ships, because they would shoot them down, mm -hmm. and also ruins from just places they just completely overrun. The data on this one, you'd find specific loadouts, and they'll be using weapons that you wouldn't find any in other legal systems. Oh. And these weapons will be sold at the shops in these regions. Nice. Maybe so, at a cheaper price that they will be sold at the... In the lawful system. Just like our locations, we can put clusters near other clusters, and we group them together, ranging between 10 to 15 locations each. And we group this into what we call a sector. A sector, all right. Like this one, that has about 120 locations. However, Oh. On a planetary scale, we can define how many sectors we should have. With each their own data and persona. Wow. And every single one of these locations is now ready for the mission system to hook up and give you gameplay. And for you yes! A bunch of places on your own. And that's where we are going to be going with the quantum system. Instead of just one specific location, it will take us to the, to the sectors. Can you guess the number? We've got about 3,042 locations. <laughs> and again, this means that Starkitect, we're just able to, on a planetary scale, just define how many locations we need, what you find there, and to just give that full identity. Thank you for listening. And I won't just see you in the verse, but I'll see you in a denser verse. In a denser verse, nice.